Charles and Charlie, wonderful to talk to you. How are you? You too, very good. Hey. I'm so, I marvel at your craft. You're such an accomplished actor, both on stage as well as uh, in front of camera, That's very Charles. Nice Was there anything about Calabrimbo that you couldn't wrap your head around with initially? Now, after two seasons, a piece of cake, but... <laughs> when you started off, was there something that you found a little difficult? No, why did it seem that there was? Sorry? Did it seem that there was? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> effortless. You're always effortless. No, yeah. it's, um, it, no there wasn't. Um, I, but I knew what was coming. I guess that was part of it, because I knew where the, it was going. So, um, and if you, obviously you can't play as the character that you know where it's going, but I, I had an arc in my head already. Um, and and it was explained to me that we would be, co if not the Anatar story, we would be covering a story along those lines. Mm. Um, it only became apparent later that we were able to use the Anatar um, name. So we were both very pleased about that. Yeah. But um, no, I, I kind of saw, as a result of that, I kind of had it mapped out. We saw you uh, masquerade as a human in season one, Charlie, and now an elf in season two. We take it the level of deceit from Sauron is going to get higher and higher. Yeah. Is it be fair to say that? Yeah, I think it now it's become a running theme, and I think it's something that will continue on throughout the rest of the series. I think it going into season three and season four, we know Sauron goes to Numenor, and eventually he has similar dealings with people like Farazon. You know, so it, it is a progressive thing. So Tristan Gravel better he's got it coming. Prepare himself for a bit of Sauron of manipulation. <laughs> you know, at some level you feel sorry for Kel Brimbo because he does go through an awful lot at the hands of Sauron. He does. But would you describe him as having a bit of vanity? Uh, why not? I mean, who can craft rings like this? Exactly. I agree with you. There is vanity there, there is pride, and there is ambition. And um, all those things are, you know, contributing as we, as we see throughout season two to his, to his toppling, his downfall. <laughs> Have you, have you been a fan of the films or the Tolkien books, Charlie, or both? And in that aspect, what do you love about Tolkien's writing, given that you have an entire, entire prequel like this uh, mm. on Amazon Prime? I think I was, before I became involved in this show, I, I had watched the Peter Jackson films, and that's it. Uh, but then one, when I was cast, I tried to read everything that I could and look into all the adaptations and just try and draw inspiration from anywhere and that's the thing about Tolkien and that's what I love about it. It's kind of the same answer really that it continues to inspire generations of artists, of, of actors, of, of filmmakers, of cartoonists. It's, it's like endless. The adaptations are endless and it's, um, we don't have to look very far to find inspiration for this show. Mm. Not only from the source himself, but from so many other people. Charlie, the whole relationship between Holbrand and Galadriel, where she becomes vulnerable for him and has feelings for him, it gives him a sense of power over her, isn't it? I'd like you to talk about that. Yeah, I think he, he becomes what she needs. He's, I think Elrond has a line in the first or second episode. He's, he says something along the lines of uh, the lost king needing to find a, an army. You know, he gave her needing to find a purpose. He gave her a sense of direction and she brought the darkness back to her people. And I think that would that gives Sauron a, a huge feeling of power over her because he manipulated her and he knows that she needs him. And I think we pick up the second season where she has rejected him, his offer of, um, for them to rule together. But I think deep down he thinks I can, you know, I will be able to get her to join me if the time comes again. Charles, you were in India for season one. Yeah. Now Singapore, which is again full of Indians, almost like half of India. How much do you enjoy my country and, and my people? Every time, we had a wonderful time in Mumbai. I mean, those who weren't in Mumbai I've, will I've, know how much of a good time we had. It's been notorious. Like, we've missed out on, there's so many stories from that trip is, to that Mumbai. That is the one trip that everybody wishes they were on because it was such a, it was so amazing. And, um, and to be back, uh, the, the welcome we had at the screening last night 
every time we go to anywhere and see these see screenings or we do these junkets and everything, the yeah. welcome we get is just it reminds you, you know, in a corny way why you do it all and what you know the, the purpose of it all. And it's very, very welcoming, heartwarming stuff. And uh, yeah, we got. Um, it's always great to see all our colleagues' work up there, up there on the screen as well. So, yes. it's, yeah, it's great. Scotland wasn't that where you filmed large parts of this one? No, we filmed it? it all in England. Actually, all in England, yeah. I say that, but there was a little bit in the Canary Islands. There was. Yeah. How was that? Have you been before? If if on, yeah, on I that? mean, I I live I've lived in England for like ten years, mm -hmm. so I spent a lot of time. I mean, I was in Australia for the first twenty years of my life, but um. Yeah, it's been awesome. Because but we, it, we didn't get to go to Canary Island. Oh, oh no. We, we were inside the whole time. Yeah. We were in, we were in a place called Bovingdon. Yeah, it's a Very exotic, <laughs> faraway land. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's my time. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you very much. Thank nice you very much. 94.3 Radio 1.